Do you know this plot? This is the logistic map. It is used to model development, uh, reproduction and starvation, that is, of populations in biological systems. But it is most significantly known for its archetypal display of how chaotic behavior can arise from totally deterministic but nonlinear dynamic equations. And the logistic map is written x of n plus 1 equals r times x of 1 times open paren 1 minus x of n close paren. The two feedforward terms denoting reproduction and starvation, cancelling each other out and preventing overflow, and thus clipping. The significant parameter is r, which is plotted from 2.4 to 4 in the previous plot. Depending on it, the output sequence tends to either converge towards one value as when r is below 3, or oscillate between two or more values as between 3 and 3.567, or display chaotic behavior above that. What is very characteristic of this function is that even after the onset of chaos, there are intermittent sections exhibiting oscillating attractors. It is exactly this behavior which makes it very interesting for sound synthesis. We implement the logistic map in a gen patcher again because it allows us to implement a feedforward loop easily. Let's start with that. We use a named history object this time, name it x and give it an initial value of 0.5. As denoted, in the equation we multiply that by its complement, that is 1 minus that value. Afterwards we multiply by the parameter r and clip to protect our ears. We're going to verify that this is correct by plotting that bifurcation diagram from above first. The easiest way to do it is to chit poke it into a chitter matrix as we did in the chit to sound series. We're going to send a line into our gen patcher using values in the interesting range between 2 and 4 and a very long ramp time. Seems as if our setup works correctly.
Now let's take this patch and adapt it for audio synthesis. For one, the generated output by definition is somewhere between 0 and 1. In an audio signal, this would introduce a DC offset, which is not what we want. That part is easy to fix, we scale and clip accordingly. The second problem we have is the generated frequency. Because history is a one sample delay, the output will oscillate as a rectangle at Nyquist frequency, which is why we will only hear aliasing artifacts at first. The simplest approach for our purposes is to downsample to get output at the desired frequency. For that we will use the latch gen object, which will output the first input if the second input is non-zero, otherwise output the last known value. A very simple sample and hold logic. We make a phaser followed by a delta differentiator as the control signal. That gives us the difference between consecutive phaser samples. When that value turns negative, it means a new phaser cycle has begun, so we take a logic operator and output 1 if that is the case, otherwise 0. That is our very simple downsampler with the advantage that we can determine the frequency rather than a downsample factor, as with the downsamp object. Technically, if we put that into an upsampling pulley patch, we should get more clean results, but I'll leave that to you to try out.